Dooby dooby doo. Do 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 do. Wah 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 wah. <laughs> Dooby dooby doo. We're back on the air. Here we are. Um, there it is. Boy, I could have sworn I. Let me see. Is that the zoomed in picture? It is. My room's a mess. I've just been throwing stuff on the floor. I don't care. Um, it just this a bit. Maybe like that. Crackle, crackle. There we go. Um, so yeah. I'm back. Here I am. Haven't done a live show in a little bit. Been busy. Busy, busy. I've been a busy guy. Uh, my band Turbo Lover finally played its first show Friday night at the Dive Bar here in Las Vegas. Um, oh, thank you, Kevin. Kevin is our uh, graphics guy. I don't know if you want... You don't really charge me anything for it, but I don't know if you have a side business for doing graphics for other people, but he does the graphics for the show, and he's... We're making some, we're making some stickers. I told him I, I want some Bob Eats Vegas stickers so that when I go do my show, or when I go do a review at a restaurant, I can leave it behind that they can optionally post on their wall or something that'll say, you know, as seen on Bob Eats Vegas on YouTube. Um... Just posted my bidet video. I actually have several videos that I need to get posted. Um, went to a police car show yesterday for emergency vehicles, and I wanted to get that up, but I've been busy. And then um, uh, I have another gypsy video coming. Another gypsy video. Um, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't as eventful as the one before where the bitch attacked me, but um, it... Um, you know, as soon as they, they seem like different people, they definitely know who I am. As soon as they saw me, they took off running and uh, they started picking up rocks. Now, they, they like to throw rocks at me because there's always rocks around. And uh, so I just picked up something today. Now, I normally carry like bear mace with me. I just picked this up today. I haven't even tried this yet. Yeah. So, if this bitch tries to claw me or throw a rock at me, if they get up into my, into my uh, snout again, that's what's going to happen. So, take note. I mean, listen, I don't want to shoot this bitch in the face. But tasers, stun guns are, are legal, and they recommend that you carry it. And so, you know, and the thing with mace is it's windy. You know, you spray bear mace, and um, next thing you know, it's blowing back onto your face. You know, I don't want... And so the tasers are very instantaneous, but also wear off quickly. But if she, if they come up to me and get in on into my snout again... I mean, that's, that, if you saw the last video, as soon as she saw me, she ran towards me. I was being very friendly. I said, hi, how are you? With a big smile on my face, she came running at me and started clawing me and hitting me and shit. And so I've also been in touch with um, a, a, a group that monitors these people and does a little investigation on them, finds out who they are, where they live, uh, tracks their social media, and they don't want to give up any of their sources or let people know that they know about particular ones because they're trying to keep an eye on them. And uh, one of the members had put tracking devices on some of their vehicles, and we've shared location information. So we know that they are traveling back and forth up and down the West Coast down to the border of Texas and the border of Mexico. They're picking up people and then dropping them off at different safe houses. They know where their addresses are, what their cars are. So there's an investigation going on between a documentary film crew and the FBI because they're human trafficking. And so there's a lot going on here with these scams. I mean, they're using children. They're involved in a lot of other things than just these street scams. I actually talked to one of them, you know, one of the other scams that's coming up, and we'll talk about this in my upcoming video that, that I'm going to post here in a day or two. Uh, is they're selling flowers. They go out on the corner and they sell flowers, which seems innocent enough because you'll see these like 
Mexicans, Venezuelans, whatever they are, you'll see them out there selling flowers. Now, some of these people are just selling. They got a bucket of roses and they're selling flowers. And listen, I used to do that. My mom was a florist. When I was a teenager back in the 80s, I used to go out on the corner. I'd sell a few flowers, make a couple extra bucks. I used to do it on the corner. So I have a soft spot for those guys a little bit. I, feel, I know I've done it. I've walked up and down the median and sold flowers. And that's just, you know, I come from a generation where people used to go door to door and they would offer to shovel snow, wash windows, mow your grass. You'd have a lemonade stand. So, Liz, like, I'm not against entrepreneurship, but there's a particular line that gets crossed. And the line that these guys are crossing is they're also holding up signs that are like, you know, asking for donations, please buy a flower, I'm homeless. So the goal here is rather than selling a flower for five bucks, they're hoping you give them a 20 or a 100 or something crazy, and they're raking in the money by lying to you. And when the reality is, like, they're not as poor as you say. They're not homeless. So I went up to one of them and I go, hey, uh, I work with this uh, advocacy group and we help uh, immigrants who are looking for work. And he goes, oh, for people without papers? I go, so you don't have any documentation? He goes, no, I got nothing. I said, well, where are you from? He goes, Moldovia. I go, oh, you came from Moldovia. And uh, I said, so you, you came up through Mexico and Texas? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, how did you do that? He goes, oh, you know, you fly into Mexico and you pay somebody, they bring you up to the border, you walk through the fence, you walk, uh, the people pick you up in a van, they bring you, and then you stay in their house, and then you come out on the corner and you work to pay it off. So these guys that are out there selling the flowers and running the scams, it's not that I have sympathy for them, but basically they're out there working off their debt. They are slaves. That woman out there that was trying to run me off, she's running human trafficking scams. And they're bilking these people out of money. So their scam isn't just you on the public. Their scam is the people that they have out there holding the signs. They have to work off their debt to these human traffickers. So there's more to it than you think. And there's probably prostitution and other things going on. But they've also known, one of the things about the gypsy scam that's been known for thousands of years is that they're snake oil salesmen. What they do is they just skirt the law like they're doing things that aren't technically illegal or any worse than maybe breaking an ordinance like jaywalking or panhandling. But this is why they run these kind of scams like fortune telling, palm reading. Uh, they're always like when you're walking through the mall and they're trying to say, hey, can I clean your watch? Can I clean your shoes? Right? They're just selling Windex in a bottle for 20 bucks. Trying to tell you that, I mean, just as an example, okay, this is the stuff I use, okay? This is called Cape Cod Metal Polishing Cloths. Now, this is not an endorsement. I, I, I've used these for years. It's a, uh, like a cotton fiber mixed with uh, a metal polish. And so, like, I will often clean, oops, sorry, I will clean, like, my, my TCB necklace. This is solid 14 karat gold, right, okay? So I polished that. I polished my Rolex with it last night, right? And it's just a little polishing cloth with a with a cream on it. And see how nice and shiny it is, right? So I clean it off. Um, and that's the thing about gold and silver and stainless steel. Like I did my rings as well. You just take a microfiber cloth. So I polished my skull ring. This is a replica of Keith Richards' um, ring that he wears. See. Isn't that cool? And then also this gold ring. This is one I bought from the Cosmo from Jason of Beverly Hills. I talked about, I did a video about this ring years ago. It's solid cold with uh, diamond eyes. I think I paid about 4,000 bucks for that ring. I know you guys like to see stuff like this. Let me see if I can get the focus on it. Try how cool this is. Oops, I'm trying to work. Hold on. Let's see, I'm trying to get it close to it. There you go. Look how cool that is. So those are diamonds, solid gold. They wanted, I think, six thousand for the ring. I said I'll give you four cash for it. They sold it to me. Now my point is not to brag about my ring I just dropped, but literally you could clean this with piss. It's gold. 
Anybody who's ever had this stuff knows you can clean. It's not hard to clean gold, silver, and stainless, right? And so what they do is they set up in the mall, they get that little kiosk, and they put together bottles of just bullshit water. It's deionized water and maybe a little ammonia. A little, it's just Windex. Notice that it's blue. And then they put it in a bottle that says jewelry cleaner. And they look for guys walking by with a nice watch. And they go, hey, sir, can we clean your watch? And then they give you a free cleaning. Free. It's free. No obligation. Now, they're always Romanians or Romas. They're always gypsies. They're always wearing, like, Adidas track suits and gold. And they always have, like, they always look and sound the same. You can spot their accent from across the room. Yo, bro, bro. Let me clean your watch for you. Let me clean your shoes for you. And they're selling a bottle of Windex for 20 bucks. Comes with a brush or something, and they do a free cleaning for you. And if you take a fucking Rolex like this and you clean it with a toothbrush and some Windex, it's going to look fantastic in about two seconds. And they're going to tell you, this is the greatest jewelry cleaner. This is, it will last you for years. It's normally only $29.95 for you, my friend. But for you, only $19.95. I will sell you this $1 bottle of worthless bullshit water for only $19.95. And this is how, this is just, it's always the same people. Now, sometimes you'll see them selling toys, some imported China shit. But it's, it's always a snake oil scam, and they've been doing this for a thousand years. A thousand years traveling. You know, you've ever heard the term being gypped? I got gypped. That means gypsy. Right, and I think they were originally called gypsies because they were from coming from Egypt or from that particular region. But the the gypsy isn't necessarily a race; it's a type of people that do these kind of snake oil scams. The reason they called it snake oil is like, you know, they would travel in a wagon and they would come to town, and the women would try to tantalize you sexually by dancing, belly dancing, or whatever. And then you'd have you'd have them uh, do maybe some other kind of entertainment and they would you know like think about the share song gypsies tramps and thieves we the people of the town would call us gypsies tramps and thieves but every night all the men would come around and lay their money down so the thing is is that um their 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 credo basically is that if you are stupid enough to fall for the scam, then you deserve it. That seems to justify their morality. You know, that, you know, if, you, if you're the kind of person that, and, and, and the, usually the, the scams are based in a way where they feel like they're, um, they want to involve you in something like, all right, for, as an example, one of the scams is that they'll come to the gas station and they're like, hey, bro, can you help me out, bro? Listen. Uh, my, my credit card got canceled. It got st somebody stole it or something, and uh, I don't have the money get to get back to L.A. So I, I give you this ring. This ring is worth $2,000. Just loan me 100 bucks for gas, and then when I get home, I'll send you the 100 bucks back for the, and, and plus postage if you could just hold it for me. And the idea is that they're hoping that you're going to rip them off, steal their ring, right? But the ring's worth ten dollars or something it's a piece of shit right and what they'll do is they'll they'll make up a little they'll buy a cheap gold-plated ring right or necklace and then they'll what they'll do is they'll make they'll get a maker's mark stamp made and they'll put 18 carat in it when it's not you know when it's fake and uh hold on just google it and you will find it Somebody was asking me about something. Um, I sent somebody a link and it didn't work. I sent somebody a link to our TV show Screen Machines on Tubi. And they go, oh, the link isn't working. I'm like, just Google it. It'll pop up and you can watch my TV show on screen on Tubi or on Amazon Prime. Anyway, these, these scams are what they do. Another scam that they do is they'll... Uh, pretend that they're playing an instrument like the violin that's hooked up to a speaker but really they're just playing like a cd and they're pretending to play and they're at looking for tips trying to work my way through college and they're playing 
but they're not actually playing. They're Milli Vanillian. It's like, why can't they take some of the, they have stamina and tenacity if they just used it for good. And some of them do. You know, that's why it's kind of unfair. I'm sure the people that are these uh, Roma people that have legit jobs who went legit. But I've, I've got to be honest. And I'm sorry to say this. And I know there's going to be, be people pissed off at me, but even the legit Roma people that I meet, they're always involved in some kind of a business that's just a little bit kind of smelly. Pawn shops, jewelry shops, loan centers, check cash in places. Um, it's just always something that's just a little kind of, you know, Something stinks. You know, it's not like labor. It's not like in a, tr you know, like some kind of, it's always some kind of shit. Timeshare, some kind of real estate bullshit. It's always some kind of thing that there's just a little bit of scam in it. Just a little bit. Yeah, a lot of used car sales. You know, there's, it may like be legit work, but there's a little bit of, turd polishing going on there somewhere every single time you look into it every single time there's a little little something stinky you know in there just the kind of business that's just a little mm. so um because listen i've uh i've had some crappy jobs in the past i used to sell meat door to door you ever seen these people that sell meat door to door and let me tell you by the way the meat selling door-to-door -door thing is um, generally a scam and I used to try to do it legit and I didn't do as well you'll see these ads the paper you know make hundred dollars a day cash paid daily so I went to one of these things and it was like a, a timeshare uh, ad or something right not really but I mean they would say okay hey this is how you're gonna make all this money you're gonna make like a thousand a week now granted this was early 90s I did this like 93 94 maybe and uh, I was living in this was in, when I was in Fort Worth Texas this was a place called YNB your neighborhood butcher and what I realized is that they weren't into business to sell meat they were into business to scam their employees here's how the scam works okay first of all do you remember the Nissan hard body little two-door pickup truck five-speed little four-cylinder these trucks new were five ninety nine they were six thousand seven thousand dollars brand new back in the 90s little Nissan hard body right that's what they called it used to be this ad that would come on do you have do you have a job do you have hundred ninety nine dollars we can put you into a Nissan truck today right so they were leasing these trucks for 200 bucks a month you as the seller, you had to put in a, uh, you had to put down like a $200 escrow. You had to pay 50 or $60 per day to use the truck and freezer. And then they would send you out in this truck. You had to use their truck. You couldn't use your own truck. You had to use their truck with their little sign on it. It had a little battery inverter hooked up to it and a little fridge, a little freezer in the back. And then you would uh, go door to door and you had these brochures. They'd hand you a big stack of brochures. Just like Amway, people are calling out stuff like Amway and, you know, that's multi-level marketing. That's a whole different scam. So this was sort of like Schwann's, if you've heard of Schwann's. You'd go to the door and this was the scam, okay? So you as the seller, you had, a, you had to pay $100 for your first case of steaks. And then 90, and then 80, and then 70, and then 60, and then the 50. So by the time you sold like 10 cases or whatever, you were only paying like, and this was for all of your cases, right? So if you came back and you only sold one case, they were charging you 100. Uh, if you sold two cases, they were charging you 90 a piece. Do you understand? So if you sold like 10 cases, you were down to like, you know, 30 or 40 dollars a case. And their their goal was if you go out and sell 10 cases at 100 bucks a piece, and you're paying you know, 30 for them, well, you're making a ton of money. That's the theory. So sometimes you'd have to give sell cases for less than 
you were paying for them, you know. You'd have to lose money. But you'd go to the door and you'd have a brochure that says this case of stakes is worth 250 bucks. So you'd go up and go, hey, uh, this was the scam that they wanted you to say. Hey, how you doing? My name is Bob. I was just making a delivery to Mrs. Jones over there at, you know, 3017, whatever. And um, I'm trying to get some new uh, customers here in the neighborhood, you know, so I can maximize this route. The, and uh, we have these cases of steak. They're normally 228 a case. But listen, um, they accidentally put too many cases on my truck. We're supposed to go out with 10, and there was already two in the freezer. I have two extra cases. So um, I'm looking for some new business. If you want these, like I can let you have them for like 100 bucks a piece. So you can try them out. And then if you like them, call me and I'll hook you up. Right? Whenever I get a deal like this, like I'll call you and let you know, okay? Because this doesn't ha this happens all the time to me. And um, you know, normally like they're over 200 bucks. I only have it for 100 bucks just to try it out. Now really, this is a $30 case of meat, right? Fucking steaks are this thin. They suck. So um and that's the scam. And I'm like, why don't we just be honest and go, hey, we sell meat and this is the price. And the, the trainers would say to you, no, 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 the, you, you got to make people think that they are ripping off somebody. If they think that they're getting a deal because they're saving 130 bucks by ripping off, by the two of you colluding and stealing from the company. I'm like, so really what you're saying is that general people are so shitty that if, you both, if, if they think that you're both ripping somebody off, they'll go for the deal. And that's how they did business. That was their sales strategy. And I would just be honest with people. Go, hey, I sell meat. And I go, we have like, uh, and I would tell them exactly what I'm telling you right now. I'd say, uh, the way our sales structure works is the more cases I sell, the cheaper they get for me. So right now, like my cost on this case is like 80 bucks. But you know what? I'll let you have it for like less than my cost just so that I, get, because if I don't sell 10 cases a day, I can't make a dollar. So like, you know, I'd like to get a hundred bucks for it, but what, what do you, you know, what's the best you'll do for me? Help me out. And then people would, they wouldn't believe me. They would think, oh yeah, you're really paying, you know. And so the problem is, is what I, what I realized is they had like, you know, 50 drivers running around. Well, we're paying $50 a day for a truck, right? That they're paying $200. So I got on my calculator one day and I go, $50 times 30. They're making 1500 a month selling a truck out every single day of the week that they're paying $200 for. So 1500 minus $200, $1,300. And they got like 20 of those. They're making like 26,000 a month and just renting out the trucks. Now this is a 94, right? So they were making a ton of money. And I realized they're not in business to sell meat. They're in the business of renting trucks to people who are trying to sell meat. That was the scam. <laughs> Of course, they had cost. They had a warehouse and a freezer, and, and there was meat and everything. And they're probably making money on the meat and all that other stuff as well. But their main moneymaker was renting the trucks to the sellers. So at the end of the day, that was a gypsy scam. Oh, you did the speaker scam. Here's the speaker scam. You, you got a white van. You pull up to somebody to guess it. Hey, guy, are you into custom audio? Listen, man, I've got two of these uh, Nakamuchi or whatever bullshit name it is. These are liquid-cooled uh, neodymium speakers, right? These things are worth 2000 bucks. I was supposed to pick up two speakers. They gave me two pairs of speakers. I got to get back to the warehouse, but they don't know that they're missing. If I get rid of them before I get back, nobody will know, right? Because there's a tracking device on the van. I'll let you have these speakers for like 200 bucks right now, 200 bucks. The speakers are worthless. They're worthless shit flea market speakers from China. And they're in a big box, and that's the speaker scam that this that this clown used to do. Fuck you, Tim. <laughs> and so these are all gypsy scams, right? Bait and switches. And like, you know, you might, because you're not going to test passive speakers at a 7-Eleven. There's no way to do that. You just have to take their word. And they were, you know, it might be one little four-inch speaker in there, and, and then they'd fill it up with, they'd put a brick in it, you know, make them heavy. You know, or whatever. I'm familiar with all these scams because I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the ghetto, and I saw this all day long. Right? Nobody's gonna pull up to you with a pair of, you know, oh, I've got some banging Olsen speakers. No, you don't. Unless you ripped them off, and that's part. And see, that's what some of these guys do. They want to make you think that they stole them because that adds legitimacy to the, you know, because you're like, where did you get them? 
you know. And so shit you'll see in the ghetto all the time is they'll go find a box that a, a TV was in or whatever, and they'll run around and try to sell them. I used to know a guy who did that scam. Because I, this is how I found out about the scam. I ran into him one time at a gas station. I was like, hey, man, what's going on? And he's like, you know, I was like, he's trying to wave me off. And I was like, dude, I'll buy those speakers off you. And he's like, no, you don't want them. You know, he was trying to be cool and run me off, you know, because he was trying to scam this other guy. And I'm like, dude, I got 200 bucks. I'll buy them. He's like, oh, oh, you know, you don't want these. You know, I'm like, yeah, I would love to have them. You know, he's just like, Mark, it's nay on that can out of here. So fucking funny. So anyway, I have become the local neighborhood Karen. Let me tell you another funny one. This is fucking funny. <laughs> you guys know that police car that I keep in my, that I had in my driveway. It's been just sitting around here for two or three years. I bought an old crown Victoria police car. Well, another epidemic of bullshit that's been going on around town here is it's been on the news lately that, you know, these Mexicans or immigrants or Venezuelans or Cubans, whatever they are, but you know, whatever they are, they've been setting up little restaurants on the side of the road. So they set up like a pop-up tent and a folding table, little generator and some Christmas lights and a goddamn speaker. And they're just on the sidewalk. So they'll just pick a random sidewalk at an intersection and set up and and then they just set they got some home Tupperware and shit. And they're just selling tacos and tamales. Did you guys hear the story about the woman in Mexico that was selling tamales out of her car, but she was making them out of people that she killed? So she was killing people and making tamales out of them. She killed like 50 people. I'm not making this up. You can Google this shit. Let's see. Let's see what her name was. Because I saw the story on it. Hold on. God damn it. Let's see. Woman killing people and making tamales. Let's see. Human tamale maker. God damn it. Pop up fucking ads. Woman who cooked tamales with human meat. She made tamales out of her husband. Maria Trinidad Ramirez was a Mexican woman who worked tirelessly selling tamales. They try to make a victim out of her. Oh, to, to, to. She was just trying to feed her family by feeding other people. Look at this. This is a real fucking story. This is happening. All right. She is human tamale maker of Mexico City, this bitch. All right. I'm trying to see how many people it was that she killed. It was a lot. That's why I don't buy tamales out of a trunk of a car. Oh, my God. Is that an actual photo? Holy shit. Is that a real photo? Of a body that she had hacked, they, that they found at her house? She was hacking people up. Is that for real? I gotta copy and paste this. I gotta send this to somebody. So just Google like Mexican tamale killer. She sold her food outside the CDMX subway station. Um, let's see. The leak of gas had seeped through the walls of her house, clouding with the air. Let's see. It's a long article. They had, she had the most delicious tender tamales. Little did they know. For years, she had been preying on innocent women Offering food and shelter. She admitted to killing over 50 women, luring them into her home with the promise of food and shelter, only to brutally murder them and use their flesh for her tamales. She had no remorse. You know, it's like, what kind of tamales do you have? Oh, we have carne asada, we have pork, we have Pedro, we have Esmeralda. We have... It's not funny. Gomez's defense attorney tried to argue that she was just mentally ill. Right? It's sort of like that Adams family thing where where Wednesday's like, are your Girl Scout cookies made out of real Girl Scouts? So anyway, 
Um, did she get good? <laughs> did she have good Google reviews? I want to see this bitch's Yelp. Oh goddamn! So anyway, we're gonna send that to Eric. Hold on. Jesus Christ. I'll send it to Jerry too. So, um, okay. Oh, back to the story. So these guys have been setting up these little food tents everywhere. And so the city has been trying to shut them down because a whole bunch of them have been set up over there by the sign. Anybody who lives in Vegas knows when you say the sign, they mean the welcome to Vegas sign on Las Vegas Boulevard. What's Xander saying? She was making a real killing. <laughs> well, hey, listen, if you came over for tamales, I'd eat you. Um, so these Mexicans are setting up these little tamale tent or Mex uh, food restaurant tents, right? Now, when you have a food truck or a food cart that's stainless steel, it has to be kept in a commissary where it's washed. I mean, these people aren't, they don't have any hygiene. All right, they're coming from Mexico City. They're coming from third world countries. And to them, this is how normal life is. That's not how we do things here. So I've become the local Karen. So they've been setting up their little tent down the street. Well, I took the police car and I went and parked it on the spot where they normally set up. So they couldn't set up there. And they haven't been setting up. So, so every day... You know, they set up about seven at night and they stay there until about two in the morning. With their fucking tacos. So I, uh, I went down there, parked the cop car right in their spot. Next thing I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to go carry a big thermos of bleach and I'm just going to go up like I'm ready to order. I'm just going to pour it on all their fucking food and go get out of here. Right? This is why I've got shit like this. Right? I've got, I've got mace. I've got these things here, right? Now, these are perfectly legal and encouraged. The police actually want you to carry them. Oh, yeah, I've got tons of other shit. You guys know what I got. You know, it's an open carry state. I can walk around with it. But listen, I'm not going to shoot some old lady over a taco. Okay. Um, but... The bottom line is, people are like, why are you uh, fucking with these people? What do you get out of it? How are they bothering you? They're degradating my entire city, right? This is why places like East L.A., this is why, like, Oregon, you know, like, if you just let people set up tents and panhandle and sell food on the street and sleep on the sidewalk, and do drugs in public, and sit on the stoop, and sell stuff at the corners. I don't want to live in Mexico. I don't want to live in Haiti. I don't want to live in the ghetto. If the cops aren't going to do their goddamn job, it's time for the citizens to do it. We need to bring back shame. We need to bring back the vigilante crowds. It's time to start running people the fuck out. Right? You want to have a job? Then you do a job. You want to open a restaurant? You want to be an immigrant? Hey, Pepe wants to come in from Italy and open up a pizzeria down in Hell's Kitchen. Fucking great. You can do it the hard way, like everybody else. I've owned a restaurant before. But you're not going to be opening up the, the, the killer tamale stand on 7-Eleven corner. These people just go into people's... Like, I went and talked to the manager at 7-Eleven, and I said, what's with the uh, Mexican restaurant in the parking lot? He goes... Man, what am I going to do? I, you know, I call the cops. You know, like, I can't do anything. He goes, actually, they set up on the other, if you notice, they're on the other side of the curb. So that little patch of dirt there belongs to the other property owner. That doesn't belong to the, my 7-Eleven. They're not on my property. They know enough about that. So what's happening is these immigrants are coming in, and they're being trained. They're learning squatter's rights. They're learning all the little tricks of how to skirt the system. Oh, well, you can do this, you can't do that. You need to be on this property, not that property. You're, you're allowed to have a tent here. You're allowed to do this. You're allowed to do this without a permit. Or you're supposed to have a permit. And when you talk to the cops, they go, what are we going to do, man? Arrest them for jaywalking in the street. Arrest them from panhandling them. We're going to write a ticket 
to an immigrant who doesn't have an ID. And then there's all these laws that I'm not allowed to, you know, harass them. And what am I going to do? Call ICE to come over here? You know, and it's like they're just... And then there's other people that are like, hey, man, what's the problem? They're just trying to sell food. You know, hey, man, I love... I love these taco stands. They're great. Well, there's a big difference between a taco truck, a food truck with washable stainless steel walls that has sinks sanit- and has to get inspected. You can't have people, because this is how this woman was selling tacos made out of people for, for years. You know, these, these guys that set up on Hollywood Boulevard and sell the bacon-wrapped hot dogs where they're grilling on a hibachi on a, on a tool cart Right, and you get you're gonna get sick. You you think they give a fuck about hygiene? You think that they care? You know they have bacon sitting out in the sun all day long, and then they're gonna sell you a hot dog for five bucks. No, thanks. Big difference between the food carts you see in New York City and stuff. What's Paul over here yakking about? Let's open up and sell Ghostbuster popcorn containers. That joke is old already, Paul. Get over it. So. Um, you know, people are like, why are you such a Karen? Why are you such a busybody? It's not an HOA. Because I guess the same reason that people go become police officers or firemen or join the military or whatever. There's just good and evil in this world. And, and you know, from a lot of people, see, from the bleeding heart liberal that I am not, they'll sit there and go, hey, man, they're just trying to make a living. Man, they're just trying to get it, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is not a third world country. I don't want to, by the way, this is Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a retirement community and a tourist destination. It's a playground for rich people. If you're not making over $100,000 a year, you should not be living here. If you're going to work here, you're right. You're going to have a roommate. You're going to be riding the bus or you're going to have a shitty car. And you need to figure out how your household income needs to be over 100000 So if you're making 30000 a year, there better be three of you motherfuckers or four living in an apartment together and sharing it. And, and the people out there who go, well, I can't live on minimum wage. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to live on minimum wage. I just realized I didn't have my brightness turned up. That's why it's so dark. But you're not supposed to live on minimum wage. Minimum wage is made for children and retired people for side gigs. You know, if you're bagging groceries at 40 years old, you fucked up in life, and you're paying the penance of life. Be lucky you're not in prison. That's why I said poor people are stupid. They go, hey, man, that's not right. Yeah, it's right. If you are... Older than 25, and you're not on your way to higher education, mentorship, um, apprenticeship, if you're not already working for a company, doing a career, or running a business of your own, you're on your way to doing manual labor until you fall down dead. Like when I go to a 7-Eleven And there's a dude behind the counter, 45 years old, who looks disheveled. You tell lives with his mom, and he's making eight bucks an hour. Or I go to McDonald's, and you're not the manager, and you're 40 years old. Just going, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Now, if you're a housewife, and you're married to somebody who makes a good job, a good living, and then you're doing a side job, well, then okay, but you're also, you have money. So, like, my wife doesn't make a lot of money with her job, but she's married to a guy who does. So that's an exemption. If you're a retired person and you're making, I don't know, 1200 a month, and then you're doing, like, a, whatever it is, or maybe you got a pension, and, and then you got a little side gig you do, you're bagging groceries, you work, or you work up at the Kroger's and you're something like that, okay, that's fine. You know, little old lady has a job, or old guy, he's a, he does the cross, you know, he, he, he's a... a, a, a crosswalk volunteer during the day and then he uh, checks your receipts at the Walmart at night and just because he wants to be out of the house. Okay, but the 35-year-old that goes, I can't live on minimum wage. No shit. 
It takes no effort or skill to put something in a bag or make a sandwich. Your mom made me a sandwich last night. So, like, you, you got to get your shit together. You better learn to be an electrician, a plumber, a uh, carpenter, you know, a doctor, a lawyer. If you're a chick, uh, Sam Kennison said it best. Get a job or fuck somebody who has a job. There's a lot of women out there that are now hitting 40 years old. They've got two cats. Their looks are disappearing, and now they're wondering how come no dude wants to take care of them. Well, you was a career woman a minute ago, and now all of a sudden, you know, you're not. And you're going to have to pay your own bills. And so there's a lot of people coming to the grips of that reality that you can't live on those jobs. And by the way, they're all going to be replaced by AI and robots. You know? So, what does this say? I would use, I don't know if this is a joke, the Byra launcher, it totally legal. I don't know what that is. That's a joke. What does Paul say? So, how was the debut of the band? It was great. Hello, Galveston. Um, so, you know, the thing about it is that I've had people tell me, oh, like, oh, it's so easy for you. Man, I did. I did every shit job, but through the, my 20s, it took me a long time to get where I'm at now. It was a lot of effort and work. Once you got a certain amount of your shit together, then you can kind of like ride for a while. Like for instance, um, I'm not above working. I do work before a living. I'm actually meeting with a um, some people tomorrow about being a uh, limousine driver, a chauffeur. I'm serious uh, with the Rolls Royces. I go, you know, I own three Rolls Royces, and um, they're just sitting around. Um, I'd like to do a little part-time work and chauffeur my Rolls Royce Phantom. You know, you come to Vegas, you want to get picked up in that thing and dropped off. Well, you know, you got to remember, it's like three fifty an hour to rent a Rolls Royce and driver with a two hour minimum. So 700 bucks for one trip. We're talking like, you know, 30 minutes or something or an hour or whatever, you know, you get a two hour minimum. So um, I might have to wear the hat. Yeah, it's not a top hat, it's a chauffeur's hat. But um, I might, yeah, I'll wear a black suit. I walk up, open the door for you. Hello, hello, Mr. So-and-so. I'll be taking you to Harry Reid Airport. Uh, to your Delta Airlines. Let me grab your luggage for you. But, you know, if I make like 500 bucks to take you to the airport, I'm going to do that shit. And um, I just thought, you know, I could do a few of those of, um, you know, a week, and it would, it would pay the electricity bill around here. And I, I like doing it anyway. I like people. I like driving around. Sometimes I just get in that car and drive around anyway. And I said, look, I got a Rolls Royce Phantom, I got a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, and I also have the Corniche. Um, and, you know, if Uber paid better, I would probably do it on the side. But the people that I know that do Uber, they're like, dude, you got to drive like 10 hours a day to make money. And I'm like, fuck that. I don't want to be a cab driver. I've seen some of the clowns that get in and out of an Uber. Uh, they're not all customers that you want. I'm like, I'm not going to Uber in my Maserati. I could. But I'm not gonna. But, um, you know, I'm not going to start a chauffeur company. I was just going to work under somebody else, like subleasing my car and myself. And I don't want anybody else driving the car. So I'm like, so I go, look, if you can make this happen, if I can qualify to drive the car. I used to be a tour bus driver, don't forget. Um, I used to drive... Um, you know, 40 foot tour bus around the country with a trailer with millionaire musicians in it. I'm sure I could drive your ass to the airport. I've been driving this car for like five years. I know this car intimately. I'm probably the only chauffeur that works on his own car. But I would enjoy it. It would be fun. Um, the uh, I don't have it like 100% officially booked yet, Paul, but 
I just talked with, uh, I will be having, for those of you interested, mark your calendars. September 1st this year, Sunday, will be my 50th birthday. I'm going to have a huge, and when I say huge, I mean I'm renting out a venue, a pretty decent size. I'm, it's going to cost a lot. I'm renting out a Las Vegas venue, pretty big place. We're talking about a place with a stage, lights, kitchen, bar, staff. Like, this is going to cost me a lot of money. But um, we're going to have a huge Video Bob's 50th birthday blowout. F fucking be here. I can't make the official announcement, but it's going to happen. It's going to be September 1st, Sunday this year. If you want to fly to Vegas and come, I'll be announcing where it's going to be. It's not going to be like officially open to the public like if just some walk walker by. You'll have a code word to get in. There'll be food. There's going to be members of KISS. The voice of KISS. There's going to be a lot of rock stars in attendance. My band Turbo Lover will definitely be playing. And uh, then we're going to have an all-star jam with Las Vegas musicians, magicians, mentalists, performers, just you name it. It's going to be huge. And it's not going to be at my house. It's going to be at a venue that I'm renting slightly off strip. It'll be September 1st, Sunday this year. If the Texas Bluesmen want to perform 100%, you're on the bill. You're hired. Um, I'm not joking, really. You guys want to get up and do a track show, do like, you know, do a few songs? That would be fucking great. Um, you know, I can't make any of the announcements of who's going to be there yet. And I probably won't be able to announce the people that are going to be there because, you know, contractually they can't appear somewhere like officially but there's going to be people there and there's going to be, be be some people that get up on stage and it's going to be it's you know it'll make news and um it's happening so if you've ever if you're a big giant video bob fan you want to meet me it's september 1st in las vegas it's going to happen so that would be the time. Book your flight. Get your hotel. Uh, we may, we might live stream it. Actually, I'm sure I probably will. I'm definitely gonna make a video about it. You know, for sure. I don't know if I'll live stream it because I'm gonna be pretty busy. I'm gonna be meet and greeting, singing, performing. We're gonna have this big jam session. We're gonna have some pretty notable musicians there, comics, all kinds of things, and um, it's gonna be a big show. I'm just telling you now. So. Um, like I said, we still got, what, six months or whatever. What is it? It's uh, March, April, May, June, July, August. So we got five months to plan it out. And um, it's, it's going to, I've been thinking about this for years, actually. You know, and I'm like, for my 50th birthday, even if I didn't live here, we'd be doing this. <laughs> so that it's going to happen. There's going to be some celebrities there. It'll be a whole red carpet event. And, um, you know, you only turn 50 once. So, I mean, it's... So, we're going to have a VIP section for certain people. Uh, we're going to have... She was asking me about the catering. The lady who runs the venue, and, and they have a kitchen, and a full barn kitchen. I said, so this is what it's going to be. How it's going to work is uh, it'll be a regular cash bar and cash kitchen the way the venue would normally be open. But I said, I'll just buy, like, 20 or 40 pizzas and we'll put them out and then everybody who has a VIP wristband or whatever can go into that area and have free food. Um, so this guy says, don't jinx it. You may not make it to 50. Well, if I die before then, I guess you'll know it's canceled. My nose itches. I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to, I, I plan on making another five months. We'll see. So, um, we will be serving human tamales. Uh, rather than catering, I'll just get m these Mexican dudes with their tents to set up in the parking lot. Uh, 
Um, but Paul, can, can you get Justin to come? This is what I want you to do, Paul. For my birthday, buy Justin a plane ticket. Can you do that for my birthday? That's what I want for my birthday. I want you to buy Justin a plane ticket. You two assholes get a room at the Rio or something for 29 bucks. I mean, I do have two rooms here, but I'm going to have a lot of people come to town that's going to want to use the rooms. Everybody's going to want to, you know, I'm sure Jared and Jessica are going to be coming, my buddy Randy. Just There's going to be a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people. You know, I might have family come in that I haven't seen in years. There's going to there's gonna be a lot of people here. And, um, and I'm going to need help. And so, um, but I'm dead serious. You should come, bring Justin, bring your suits and hats, and um, get up and do a couple songs for me for my birthday. That would be fantastic. And it would be a great opportunity to get to meet some of the people uh, that you need to meet here in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, dress code, uh, it's a fucking metal show. You know? We're assless chaps. It's a Judy. I, I'm going to dress like a gay fetish leather guy on stage. That's how I'll be dressed. So, um, you know, it'll be September. It'll be hot as ever loving fuck. So, you know. Dress like you're going to a heavy metal concert because that's what it's going to be. Um, but I'll be doing my Turbo Lover show like I did the other night. Matter of fact, I, I've got a USB stick out in the car. I've got to go bring it in. I, I haven't posted anything about my show Friday night because I haven't had a chance. I've been just so busy. I had to, the, the next day, I slept, slept in. I was so tired. You know, when you perform, and um, not just the performance, but loading all the equipment in and out, it was a lot of work. You know, and it's just it's a taxing on you, Paul knows. You know, you're used to it now, I'm sure. But, man, when you're doing a show day, man. It's a, uh, it's a deal. I don't need to wear a wig. Uh, Rob Halford is bald. So, what hotels will be near the near the venue, dude? It's Las Vegas. We have more hotel rooms than any other place on earth. <laughs> Just pick one. Pick the one that's in your budget. Nothing, the, where the venue is, is um, off strip, and there's not necessarily anything, I mean, it's on the um, west side of the strip, so the Palms, Orleans, Rio, like all of those shitty hotels, they're not expensive, um, but you could just stay anywhere and you just catch an Uber, catch a cab, you know what I mean? Um if you, since you know that it's like five months from now, you can book a plane and a, uh, we're not necessarily, if you're just a fan coming to watch, we're not doing anything official before or after. The show day will be September 1st, Sunday. So you come in on a Saturday, you know, but it's Vegas. Come in for a few days if you have the time, you know. And what I might do, okay, what I might do is maybe, the day before or the day after or something, I might do a meet and greet or something at the house. So I might do either a pre-party or a post-party for certain guests because they're going to want to come and see the house. So I might have a, a ultra-private VIP thing at the house, a mixer, and then the official show. So maybe we'll do that Saturday, uh, either Saturday or Monday. I'll have to decide which is better, doing it before or after, maybe before. And uh, for people who come into town. So we'll do like a uh, kind of a thing at the house, give tours and stuff, and uh, I'll let certain people come for that. Um, because like all my friends are going to want to come over, you know, people who have not seen the Vegas property yet. So, um, you know, we'll have a tiki pool party or something here the day before. So we'll probably do that and then have my big party the next day. So, yes, Patreon supporters, of course. People are going to be in there wanting to use my bidet. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, because people are always all the time asking me, you know, when are you going to do some kind of meet and greet type of thing? And this is going to be the time. Um, so, anyway, I'm just, I don't want to announce the, uh, I don't want to announce the name of the venue yet because, um, you know, I got to get the contract in and everything before I do it. But no matter what, even if I don't use this place, I'll be doing it somewhere. But it will be happening September 1st. That'll be my actual birthday. I was trying to maybe do it on the Saturday before, which would be, you know, August 31st, Saturday. And if this other venue were to fall through for any reason, there's a, there's a possibility that it could happen on that day. So the way I look at it is you should be coming in on by Saturday anyway to get ready for the next day. But, but you could theoretically fly in on Sunday day because the thing is going to happen at night, like probably from 7 to 11. So, you know. Um, but if I were you, if I were coming to Vegas, I would plan a weekend, you know, come in on a Friday and leave on a Monday. But if you're going to leave Monday, Tuesday's the cheapest day to fly. If you were going to leave on Monday, don't do it early in the morning. You don't want to be, you're going to be hurting if you come, uh, before, you know, because we're, we're probably going to go late. You don't want to be getting up at seven in the morning to fly. You know what I mean? Um, so, now I wasn't going to sell merch, but there will be some giveaways. There's going to be a, a lot of giveaways. This isn't an opportunity for me to make money. I'm going to be giving back to my friends. There's going to be food. There's going to be there's going to be cool cakes and cupcakes and snacks and treats. And there's going to be just all kinds of fun happening. Lots of fun. So that would be a perfect place, now, wouldn't it? So. I just got to get everything buttoned up, and once it's in ink and the deposit is done, uh, I will make the official announcements. So, anyway, I think I've had enough on here. It's an hour. I wanted to keep it at an hour. I got to pee. I'm going to go try out my new bidet. If you haven't watched my new bidet video, it's pretty funny. I did like a 20, 30-minute thing on how to install this thing and, and what it's like to own it. It was kind of expensive. It was like $1,600 or something for this toilet. But you want to know something? Think about, like, okay, first of all, you know, as you get older, one of the great joys in life is just having a nice shit. I mean, there's sleep, you know, there's good meal, and it's like the things you care about are comfort. And you go, well, how can, listen, I've been using the toilet my whole life. How can it be better? It can be better. Like this thing, and, and, and what makes this one more expensive than just the seats? You know, you can buy the toilet bidet seats for as low as about 300 bucks, right? But what makes this special is because it's integrated, it's wider, it's bigger. So like the whole seat is bigger and more comfortable. Um, it's very clean the way it's designed. Like you can wipe it off. It doesn't, you know, it has a very clean. When you walk up to it, the lid opens, light comes on. Like it's ready to rock. You know what I mean? It's got warmed water, warmed air, warmed seat. It's self-flushing. It's super quiet flush, by the way. Um, and somehow it knows. If you just pee, it knows you peed, and then it gives a little, uh, like a light flush. And then if you're really in there for a while, it gives a full flush. And then it'll even beep to tell you you've been sitting there too long, you know. Um, it's just It's just crazy, like the technology. And you go... Listen, all the other things in my life are upgraded. I've got like a fancy microwave with a soft closed door, and I've got a fancy stove and an oven, and a fancy, uh, you know, it's like all your other appliances now are smart and high tech and fancy and comfortable. And it's like, you know, you're not going to upgrade the toilet. You're like, everybody uses, has to go to the bathroom. And you go to, yeah, like this guy says, like Charles says, Japan, you go to fancy hotels and things, and they have the bidet. And by the way, this thing at sixteen hundred bucks is their entry level Kohler bidet. Their nice ones are like ten thousand dollars. I'm like, how do you get a ten thousand dollar toilet? You know, but I gotta tell you, once you kind of get used to using it, so it's not just the the water up your ass that that's great. It's all the other things about it that make it nice. And um, you know, you sit down. There's like a little deodorizer inside the bowl that's sucking the air out and filtering through a carbon filter to keep the smell out, you know. Um, 
it's just all of it. It's just great. You're just like, it's great. You know, it's just like, look at cars you buy now. Cars have massaging seats and seat warmers, steering wheel warmer, you know, just all these different things. And it's just the same thing. It's like, you know, it's too bad they don't make the seat out of like leather, but I guess that would hold the grossness too much. You know, yeah. if it was like your own personal seat, nobody ever sat on it, I guess. But if, um, you know, what's so funny to me is they advertise this, that it's like no touch, right? Like, you know, you don't have to touch anything. You walk up, the seat opens, you sit down, you do your business, you get up, and, you know, it's supposed to be about cleanliness. But your butt is touching the whole thing. Like, you know, you're t it doesn't have a built-in toilet paper, or what do you call it, um, seat gasket, you know? So it's like, it's so dumb. I like it. Shitting as there he goes as as Robert says shitting in high cotton. That's for sure. And I am. All right, hey, thanks for hanging out. Had another uh, good show. I'm not gonna do another rehearsal until like Wednesday. Working on a bunch of new songs. I don't know if I'm gonna keep live streaming on this channel on the Video Bob Show channel. I don't know if you guys really care about that. I think a lot of the subscribers have. They don't want to watch my stupid band. But um, anyway, we'll talk more about the birthday party. But you're the first to hear about it. Uh, I'm just getting it lined up. Like I literally just got through emailing with the person a minute ago. So anyway, that's kind of what we're working on. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to Video Bob because I know where you live, bitch. Oh, you're watching the Video Slob Show. Yeah, no. Come on. Do it. <laughs> You're watching the video Bob oh, show. Oh, come on. Video Bob. Shut up. Come on. Do it again. You're watching the video Bob with the Dika group, Stefan and Dika. Right there, go. Stefan. No. Oh. Fuck it. Do it right. Do it right. <laughs> That's it. You prick.